Hey everybody, this is Bob from Bucket List Cruise and Travel. Today we're going to talk about Yosemite National Park. Where is it located? And how do you get there? Stay tuned and we're going to show you how. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Bob from Bucket List Cruise and Travel. We're talking about Yosemite National Park today and how would one visit Yosemite National Park? Well, it's located in the Sierra Nevada mountain range in Central California. It's very easy to visit. People do it from all over the world. It's on everybody's bucket list, you know. There's five entrances that serve Yosemite National Park. We will describe the entrances and we're gonna talk about the routes from the major airports surrounding the park. If you're planning to visit Yosemite National Park independently, you'll likely want to fly into one of these four airports. The airports will be highlighted and we're going to include them. San Francisco, Los Angeles, Fresno, and Las Vegas are the four major airports. That you will choose to fly into one of these other airports and we will review that and the various entrances. The first we're going to talk about is San Francisco. From San Francisco, the most direct route, it'll take you through the Highway 120 entrance which is about 194 miles and it'll take you a little bit less than four hours to get all the way down to the valley floor. Your most direct route to Yosemite is through the El Portel entrance, which is magical. It's a great entrance. You go through a rock tunnel to get there. It's really cool. You're going to take uh, I-580 East to 205 and then you're going to go up Highway 120 through Manteca and along the route you're going to pass the historical town of Groveland. Now in Groveland, you may want to take a stop at the Iron Door Saloon while you're there. You know, that's the oldest continuously operating saloon in the state of California. It traces its roots back to the gold rush and it opened its doors first in 1852. The Highway 140 entrance, the entrance uh, is the most scenic. The highway meanders along the Merced River. There are very few commercial stops along the way until you reach the town of El Portel. The Highway 140 entrance is often used for travelers who are adding a stop to Central California or from the Central Coast, like if you're coming from Monterey or Carmel or somewhere like that. Those are great places too, by the way. The Fresno International Airport. The Fresno International Airport is the closest airport to Yosemite. The travel time from the Fresno Yosemite International Airport is about an hour and a half to the Highway 41 entrance. This entrance is popular for travelers. This route is less windy than the other options. As you get to the park, you'll be in Mountain Road, so do remember that. And in the wintertime, you will need to plan accordingly and make sure you're comfortable driving in the mountains. Once you enter the park, you will find restrooms to the right to the right hand side after you pass the gate, which is very handy because uh, there's not a whole lot of places to stop up there. You'll also pass some attractions from our video about Yosemite. We're going to do some links here. Things that are not to do about hiking, be sure to watch that video if you're planning a trip to Yosemite. There are many things that you may not know, including the backstories of some of the destinations we'll talk about. LAX is an option, but the drive time is far. Uh, prices into LAX are generally pretty good compared to some of the other airports, but it's a lot longer of a drive. You're going to be on the road almost six hours just to get to the park entrance. So you're going to spend a full day of traveling just to get to the park. The roads are relatively easy until you reach the mountains just past Fresno and you start headed up towards Oakhurst and Fish Camp. The next recommendation would be from Las Vegas. If you fly into Las Vegas, you can have a little fun in Las Vegas. Uh, your drive will take you right through Death Valley, if you choose, which you could uh, make as a side trip, spend the night there, check out Death Valley. It's a great little trip. But that uh, trip also is far. It's three hours and 41 minutes, so I wouldn't recommend doing a round trip out of Las Vegas. I would uh, go in through the east side, which is arguably my favorite side. It's beautiful. That's the Tioga Pass on Highway 120. It's not open all year. Um, it's at 10,000 feet when you come over and the snow up there is severe. Uh, it's only open usually from May to November. It depends on the year, it depends on the snowpack and how uh, quickly they can uh, 
clear that road, not just the snow, but all the down trees that end up on the, on the road as well. But it is my favorite entrance, I will, I will tell you that. You can expect the road not to open until May most of the year. Sometimes it's been as early as April and as late as July before the road opens. The time for the road to open depends on the snowpack. You'll pass some beautiful country and the transition of desert to mountains happens almost in an instant. It's really great. The road is narrow and it is steep. So if you're afraid of heights, uh, that might not be a good road for you. The most often overlooked and fifth entrance of the park is the Hetch Hetchy entrance. It's open year round, but it only sees a small population of the visitors because it leads to a lesser populated area of the park. However, the Hetch Hetchy reservoir is one to be seen. Access is via 120, the highway, and by Evergreen Road. It's open year round, but in the winter time, it's only open during the daylight hours. Now, to get creative, many visitors plan to enter one entrance of the park and exit out another. For trip ideas and itineraries, why don't you go ahead and subscribe today so that you'll get notified of our next video about things itineraries and places to stay in and around Yosemite. Now, have you visited Yosemite? Is Yosemite on your bucket list? Leave a comment down below. Stay tuned and we're going to produce some more videos about Yosemite, including things to do that do not involve hiking. Now Yosemite is a great place to go hiking, but there's so much more to see than just to hike every day. This is Bob from Bucket List Cruise and Travel and we'll see you out there.